2017 when Nana Kufadu took office. He essentially had assumed responsibility for all assets and liabilities of the state of Ghana. So it became his responsibility to address all concerns relating to ongoing projects that had not been completed. And I do not want to bore you with the history of this route, but it is important just so that the facts are clear and we know who to hold responsible for what, because that is ultimately at the heart of governance. This road started under the Kofu administration. At the time that we came to office, it had reached less than 10% completion rate. There was no dedicated line of funding, as you would expect for a major road like that. So we had to float about 400 million Ghana cities in bonds to complete that road and, three, and two others that were on government of Ghana funding. So at the time that we were leaving office in 2016, the road itself had been completed. Concrete slabs and pillars had been erected for a footbridge to serve pedestrians. What was left was some finishing touches, staircases and guardrails, and other things that would make sure that it was in good shape for pedestrians to use. Two years, in my view, is sufficient for the government that replaced us to have fixed this footbridge. They have had plenty opportunity and they have had the resources to do it. It does appear that they did not prioritize the completion of these footbridges because in terms of scope and scale it is minimal compared to the overall, the overall size of that project. So what they needed was just a little push in order to address it. Now having failed to do that it is surprising that even in the wake of these violent demonstrations we have had government officials refuse to take responsibility and go ahead to push blame on the previous administration. And if you follow the feedback that has emerged and the public backlash that government officials who have spoken this way have received, it shows clearly that the citizenry is not prepared for that kind of narrative anymore. And that government simply should own up take responsibility and do what has to be done. Now, it has even been suggested, and it has been put there strongly, that the reason why these food bridges could not be completed was that the NDC government, when exiting sometime in 2016, collateralized the road fund. And so, revenues were not flowing into the fund, and government therefore did not have the resources to carry out the completion of this project. It is true that the road fund was collateralized for 1.5 billion Ghana cities. But even then, that money was taken so that we could pay outstanding debts old contractors who were working on various roads. In addition to this, in fact, in 2008, the Kufa administration collateralized the road fund for a 300 million facility from SNIT. So part of the money that we took was used to settle that. 360 million was used to pay contractors, and we left 600 million Ghana cities in that account. That could have been used to either pay outstanding arrears owed or complete any number of projects that governments would desire. In addition to this, something, the reason why I say they have had sufficient resources to do this is that you know that when ESLA was passed somewhere in July 2015, every. What is ESLA? ESLA is the Energy Sector Levies Act, or what we apply called Energy Sector Levies. Right. Now, every liter of petrol or diesel you buy, you pay 40 pesos which goes into the road fund component of ESLA. If you look in the ESLA report presented in both 2016 and 2017, that fund averaging accrues 1.2 billion Ghana cities. And that is just 70% of the money that that fund needs. The remaining 30% comes from road tolls and transit fees. So in all, you have about 1.4 billion Ghana cities annually. So we took 1.5 billion Ghana cities in loans from UB. But at least up until the end of 2017, this government has been in a position to retire that loan in its entirety because of the inflows. In addition to that, they've had another 1.4 billion Ghana cities. So you expect that for minor works, like completing a footbridge on that stretch of road, government will have resources to do it if it was a priority. But you know what has happened? Because of government's own policy, 
these funds have been crippled such that the resources that go in are not sufficient to do anything more. Through capping, which means that only 25% of government revenue will go into the statutory funds. They take a huge chunk of the money that should go into the road funds. And then realignment, which means that they will take money out of it to finance government promises that may well be within the sector but do not fall under the scope of the statutory fund in question. Let me give you some figures just to illustrate this. In 2018, if you look into the budget, they project rightly that about 1.4 billion Ghana cities will be realized to the road fund. They also say that they will take 829 million Ghana cities out of it because of capping, which essentially allows them to spend that money on consumption or recurrent expenditure instead of the capital investment that is intended for. And then realignment. So it, essentially, the road fund was left with 581 million Ghana cities instead of 1.4 billion that they should get. So liquidity has not been a challenge, at least as far as the road fund is concerned. Something in addition to this, the road fund is not the only source of money that is used to construct roads. In fact, the bulk of roads that are constructed are done through loans and other sources of funding. Why? Through oil sales alone. This government between 2017 and August 2018 has received 3 billion Ghana cities. In fact, 435 million of that <coughs> came as a result of a windfall because of higher than expected oil prices. In addition to this, they have added 8 billion dollars to our public debt. Or in Ghana city terms, roughly 40 billion. But that is what they've added. In terms of borrowing itself, if you look at their own issuance calendar and the annual debt management report that they sent to parliament, Domestic bonds alone, they've borrowed 116 billion Ghana cities. So if this road was a priority, they could easily have borrowed money to fix it, to avert the debts that we saw. In addition to this is the fact that domestic tax revenue alone, over the last two years they've been in power, ran in excess of 70 billion Ghana cities as of the middle of this year. So they've had substantial revenue and time to fix this particular project. Except that they have prioritized recurrent expenditure consumption over capital investment. And if you want to check, just look at the figures. In 2016, if you rely on the current rebased GDP, our capital to our capital expenditure to GDP ratio, which is what the current vice president used to assess our commitment in power to infrastructure, including the fixing of roads, was 4.5% of GDP. 2017, it slammed to 2.1%. 2018, as of June, it was 1.1%. So there is a decline, which means that this government is not committed to rolling out infrastructure in the same breath as we were. They favor consumption more than capital investment. And when you do that, infrastructure will suffer. So the, the, the attempt to blame the previous government for the situation that we are in is only serving to infuriate the citizens need them more. And that is why you saw that level of anger at Adenta. Surely, President Mahama, when he became president, added to that road to the extent that he could. We simply, because the last update was given in August of 2016 by Honorable Mr. Roads Minister at the time. He said that the road was substantially completed, about 98% complete. The only thing left was a footbridge. Even then, structures had been erected to show that we were doing. We simply ran out of time and we left. Having assumed office, it was the duty of the government of the day then to complete it. But if you do not complete it, and people complain, and they stage demonstrations, you need to be sincere and candid and admit that there was some laxity or lapse in your approach. I have, for instance, heard the president say in a Facebook post that this situation arose out of 10 years of neglect, when the evidence does not point to that. Again, look at the speed and dispatch with which after these violent demonstrations, the problems are being addressed. Suddenly, government is in a position to fix this problem within a matter of a week. Yesterday, there were reports, and indeed I saw pictures, of how street lights have sprung up overnight. And how other facilities and amenities are being provided. What that means is that government has always been in that position. Whatever it is that they were able to do to get the contractors to agree to go on site to work. Why did it take them so long to do? And to cap it all, you have government officials making statements 
that show insensitivity. Why? We've heard the president say that his topmost priority is the building of a cathedral. At a time when people were complaining of hardships and demanding upgrades in infrastructure to ease their lives, that is what the president felt was his topmost priority. Quote him right. He says priority it's a priority, priority among priorities. Absolutely. These are the topmost among mm. his priorities. Okay. That's what it means. I no, it's, interpret it. it's, it's not the same. I don't well, want us to argue. Well, but, but he says it's a priority no, among priorities. Let us not place us over this. Okay. It is clear what okay. the president says. So let's talk about He places much more emphasis. No, you see, I, I, right. I highlighted that to mm. show you that people are getting angry. And that anger stems from a certain lapse, a certain failure on the part of the political leadership to read the atmosphere, the temperature, the pulse of the country. And it is the reason why we had that level of agitation in Adenta. Mm. And I'm saying that nothing excuses the neglect of that project over the last two years, given its history and trajectory. And I think that a lot more could have been done much quicker because the, the amount of work left is not significant. It's okay. something that can be done within right. the so, as we are witnessing now. Okay. There is also the issue of the motorway. Mm. And that also has a history. You know, as part of the MPS project, it was envisaged that the whole motorway will be reconstructed to facilitate the movement of goods from the port. Because of a disagreement between the uh, transport ministry and the rules ministry, that thing got bogged down in a dispute. So, the NDC government, before it left, secured money for the motorway runabout from Japan. When President Mama went for the TICAD conference in 2015, that is when that agreement began. And we got the money before we left office. So that project apparently is ongoing. But there has been some lack of information on, an, on what exactly the status of the repair of the motorway itself is. And it will be useful for government to be forthcoming at this moment and not wait for the agitation that has started, where people are insisting that they are not going to pay tolls to escalate into violent demonstrations before overnight they mobilize, mobilize resources to go and, and, and address the situation. What is clear is that given the age of that stretch of road, <coughs> it is a comprehensive redesign and reconstruction that will face the problem permanently. Mm. But it does appear also that there are things that can be done in order to ensure that whatever dangers exist now are addressed. So let us draw lessons from what has happened at Adenta. When we are elected into power, we need to take responsibility and stop playing politics and being partisan at every opportunity. People don't go and queue and vote for politicians because they think they are handsome or good looking. They okay. expect results. So you and if on. you don't deliver yeah. the results, mm. people reserve the right to rail against you, as okay. we have seen. So it is a regrettable situation, but it's a wake up call to all of us who are involved in this business of politics that when we win power, mm. you must work to meet the demands of the people. Otherwise, there will be a day of accountability. Okay. Um, Koku? Yes. <sighs> Look, of course, people have died. The media suggests that it's 194. You have told us that official sources are talking.